Seasons are changing and the coats are back on. So I know it sounds bonkers, but I absolutely love September, October. I think it's just beautiful. I'm getting ready for winter, so it just means a load of hard work, but I don't think about that. I just love the month. I'm actually starting to watch a couple of programmes on the telly. It must be getting a bit wintry. Like our transition to winter, my transition from city to country was a little more abrupt. Stop prattling about. This is far. This is not the city life. This is farming. It's got some air in it. Get going. Get going. This is farming. And as we've seen over the winter, spring and summer, it can be hilarious, is often hard work, and for mum, it's always heartfelt. September had all three. And so we lost someone, did we? Yeah. Charles is... I've got rid of Charles, I'm afraid. Charles the bull. Charles the bull. Because I don't really want two bulls, and so Charles has gone. So they're a bit depressed, because he went on Wednesday. So, yeah. Oh, I see. But, um... And he's gone for meat? He has gone into the food chain, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's been a real good boy, and I did... He's, he's such a lovely character as well. But um, I've got two bulls on the farm and I thought his time had come, basically. Um, we've got some lovely calves from him and he's got a lovely temperament and I do feel sad now. And they suit my style of farming, which is carrot farming. Bucket in the hand and they follow, yeah? I've got out quiet. Because, yeah, he's had a, I think he's had a fantastic life and he's had a really nice summer. He's been out with the boys all summer. Um, feeding and fattening and, and uh, he, uh, he went on Wednesday. I need to pay bills. I, the reality is it's all very lovely and stuff, but I have bills to pay. And they don't stop coming really either. No. <laughs> They're just relentless. Yeah. It's like, oh God. How, how much money would you get for Charles? I'm going to show you when I get the, the thing back. Um, I'm going to show you, but it'll be interesting to see how many kilos, what he actually weighed. He was like a Sherman tank. <laughs> so to see his weight is always interesting. <laughs> it's nice to see him eating out in the field, isn't it? Yeah, because it's, it's still nice and dry, Rue. And I put some silage, but they haven't got, you can see, they haven't got a blade of grass, only about a few thistles. Yeah, they've got some thistles. they got some thistles, <laughs> which is not very, but that's why they're having blocks and, and they have a big, and hopefully I'm going to get a nice bit of money for them. Yeah. There's, a, there's a, going to be a lot of struggling people, including myself, you know, trying to find the money to pay for things. Yeah. People are feeding lots of silage. We've started feeding our silage now and um, hay. They're quaffing their way through the hay because there's, there's bugger all, to, there's, there's no grass, is there? And that was because of the July when yeah. it was dry. Yeah. I've got too, too many mouths to feed, as everybody keeps telling me. And um, I'm not very good at selling them, you know. You know, I get attached to them because I'm stupid, but... Um... With summer over and some of our animals moving on, it's now the calves' turn to move out. Mum's been busy weaning. It sounds painful, but it's not. It's basically the process of taking the calves away from the mothers. Yeah. They've had, they're six months old, they're, some of them are older. Some of them are five, but, you know, mum's looking a bit... They want to rest now, the mums, so we take the children away, which sounds really bad. But um, I want my cows to have a really good rest. I've had no major dramas, no break-ins break or break breakouts. There's been a lot of hollering, but nothing too bad. And I always like to do it so they can not see one another, but they can hear one another. So they can talk to their mums and their mums can talk to them. So I give them a bit of food. They have a little bit in the morning and then a little bit in the afternoon. They're so much quieter than they was. These two of the twins were a set of twins. So how long ago did you did you Wednesday. separate? So Wednesday would have been yeah. three or but four days But there's one ago. thing they were they um, they love a bit of food, as you can see, and they're not that heartbroken that they're off the food. Yeah. <laughs> so they're eating their food. It's not been too traumatic. You know, I don't like. You know, it is. You feel a bit, you know, you feel a bit sorry for them, but you know they they're all got their head in the trough, and Mum's got to have a rest now. It's uh, she's got to go and put some weight on. She needs to now chill. She needs to chill, 
have a few duvet days, go and talk to a friend, you know, just basically lay out in the field, <laughs> yeah. have some food and not have calves um, drinking and stripping all the meat off of her bones, yeah? It's like you now, you get some duvet days, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to think so. <laughs> not the minute. <laughs> it's not just the mums that need a rest. The heat of the summer really took its toll on the land. Thankfully, mum has a plan for that too. <laughs> all the, the Max Pro has turned up. All the tractors. He's, he's, you'd worry if I was on that digger, but not with Willie. <laughs> well, I have whoever I can get to um, drive the digger. Sometimes I have to drive it, or Uncle Willie usually, if I can grab him. And then I've got my trusty contractor, which is Mick and Mark, and they come and help me. They're absolutely marvellous. So they'll come and spread it. We got Mark in there, which is nice. Yeah, so what, what's, why are we Mark spreading? Um, Overwinter our cattle, as you've seen. So you've got all that straw, all that straw goes in, and all that straw and muck has got to come out. And then what I usually do is, then in, in the summer, we then heap it up outside, and then we leave it, and it rots down. And we want that. We don't want to put it out fresh on the grass, green like that, no. We like to put it in a big heap, and let it rot down, settle down. There's loads of um, potash um, and nitrogen in it, and it's it's well rotted as well. So it's all. If we go out there, we can go and show you. But it's all like it's literally some of that is three years old. That mucky has been out there that long, and we can go and have a look. But it's just like peat. So we want to have a really good clean and spread it all and then um, harrow over and put, perhaps put a bit of grass seed and then the muck is being spread as we speak and then this rain is going to wash it and oh my goodness. All this machinery to fling around old muck. It's a pretty powerful reminder of how reliant the animals are on the land and how the land's reliant on the animals. Nothing goes to waste. That feeds the ground room. That grass has been gnawed and gnawed and gnawed by those sheep. They've been there all summer, it's had no let up. Now it's going to be fed and relaxed. It might get a harrow if it's lucky, but we'll see. But it's going to be fed. With the fields at the farm running on empty, we drove to see mum's sheep in one of the pastures a few miles away. We were in for a bit of a surprise. There was a familiar face knocking about. Go off here in reverse. Oh, in that Into bit. that gateway. Yeah. You've got a lot this stuff. There's got more of my worldly goods in. Oh, yeah. It's got your sheep drenches and your... <laughs> Where's Eric, then? Local celeb. Do you want to put a bit of food in for him? You clever boy. Don't say I don't treat you. Don't say I don't treat you. What, can't you eat it off the floor? You're too... There you go, a little bit of that. Hey, girls! Hey, you lovely girls! I like coming here because... There are a few not homebred, but the majority of these girls are homebred. So when I come here, I think, oh, they look really, really well. They're doing really well. I mean, look. This is not the sort of, it's a bit, but I had no grass at home and I, I can have this ground, so I bought them over here. Usually I'm bringing them in 30s and this year, I don't know what happened, I seem to have got 67 in here. So we've met Eric before. Eric is the teaser ram. Lots of these massive flocks, you know, you have one to every 30 ewes. 20 to 30 ewes, apparently, oh, but right. whatever. I've chucked him in with 60. He's got to get on with it. I haven't got two, I've only got one. And Eric was one of my pet lambs. You'd be surprised at that. And I loved him so much and I didn't want him to go. So what did I do? So I could keep him, I had him vasectomized. Be careful, because he can... <laughs> here he comes. Yeah, here he comes. Strutting here's the main away. man. Yeah, yeah he's got on, street cred. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can see. <laughs> yeah, look. It's very friendly. Instead of me just chucking the rams in, we put him in for two weeks 
and he goes around and smells them and then they start cycling and then so the concept is they will be better prepared right the lambing it will be a tighter lambing it will be more efficient he's like a dog he <laughs> might be careful come on girls come and see us come on eric introduce us yeah i know <laughs> what you're doing you sod <laughs> told what? you Oh yeah. my word, you yeah. think he likes you. Yeah, you think he likes you. Yeah, I think you've got that on film. <laughs> yeah. Come on, girls. Don't even think about it. I can see by the look of it. He's got attitude. <laughs> he's performing for his girls. If he does a real run, oh no, don't do that to me. That's really mean. Do it to Rufus. What is your problem? Come on, Ed. Go on. on, you first, mate. <laughs> you first. Come and do your job, not to me. <laughs> When they come over it, sometimes they're a bit wilder, but it's lovely because all the kids walk along there. Yeah, they all they come along to... on their bikes and things. Everybody talks to them. So I've had cattle over here. I don't usually bring cattle though because I think, oh God, if they got out and then started yeah. running down Buckingham High Street, oh <laughs> crap. Uh-uh. But, you know, a few sheep. It's lovely. And the kids and the, well, everybody loves to see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, we absolutely love having, I bought some sheep and lambs in the spring. They've got everything they want here. Yeah, it's so lovely. So we're really lucky to be able to. Yeah. Autumn is a time for reflection. We've had a beautiful summer, but it wasn't all sunshine. Something we didn't cover in August that had a huge significance to the land, the animals, and us. A rock of our family, Grandpa, sadly passed away. We lost Dad on the 8th of August, and the 8th of the 8th, 18, so. But we feel sadness, but I also feel thankful that um, he didn't suffer too much. And he was at home, that's what I feel really happy about. And he came home and we spent the last three weeks together with him. So it was very special. It's sadness we feel and but thankfulness as well that he, yeah, basically. My grandfather bought the farm for mum and dad and there was nothing up here, literally. There was a house and there was one or two barns and there was nothing, there wasn't even a driveway up there. So, and the hours and hours and hours he spent and what he's seen, he was 91 when he died, what he saw in his lifetime Oh my goodness, from a little boy from pumping water for the cows and the way they fed the cows, the old fashioned way they used to milk the cows, hand milking. Oh my goodness, and the, the, the hard work, the physical hard work, all that generation. Oh my goodness, it's just incredible what. The wisdom, his wisdom and you know, what do you think I ought to do about this, Dad? Do you think that would be a good, you know? Because he was such a great, great guy, great person. And, um, and I, I will and do miss it, so I have to go and bore someone else or, you know, talk to someone else. But, yeah, and his love of animals. He loved animals, and animals loved him. It didn't matter what you had. Every dog or Maggie absolutely adored him, right up to when, you know, he left us. She'd go up and, you know, because he'd always... <laughs> Put his hand out. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Generation after generation of farmers. A man who I'll forever admire for his values and dedication to his family and life's work. It's easy to see where mum gets all her passion from. We all done our jobs. We we're a small family farm and we all helped dad. So he never forced any of us or said, in fact, he said, Sarah, I can't, I can't pay you. So what I did when I went, I did go to agricultural college and I absolutely loved it. And um, so I used to help him and I used to see him struggling. It's like, I'm not going to let him struggle anymore. So that did have a bearing. And I thought I'm going to do, I want to do this. I love the animal. I'd always fed the calves and that's where it all started. Definitely from my father and my grandfather, fantastic mentors, wisdom, Encourage, encourage my grandfather because, um, you know, he 
bought land and he didn't have that much money, but he managed to get the money together. So it took courage because the, the land was very cheap, but it, although it was very cheap, they still got to find the money to pay. So he, if it wasn't for my grandfather, we, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. We're very proud and I shall keep this place going for as long as I can. And then my sons are going to take it over and they're going to keep it going. Yes, hopefully. Yeah. It makes me incredibly proud to be part of yeah. a farming family. Yeah. For mum, the choice to become a farmer is simple. I think you do feel a certain loyalty, don't you? Oh my goodness. And my grandfather and my father and the way they spoke and the admiration, you know, my great-great-grandfather, he was amazing. Even in his 80s, he was digging ditches out and and you think, oh my goodness. And then you go around the fields and you think, this is the ditch that he dug out, yeah. or um, this is the field that my father used to walk up as a little boy. And do, yeah, I, I just feel so passionate about it. For me, farming isn't generational because of the trade, but because of the traits that it instills. I am looking forward to winter. I love winter, because you know why? All my animals are here, they're everywhere, they're all in the barn where I can keep my eye on them. Yeah, I do love winter. Does that sound mad? I do like winter. I like the fire in the grate. I like the stew bubbling on top of the stove. And I like Strictly Come Dancing on a Saturday night. That's it. <laughs> Will that do? Yes. Yeah. Thank God.